Hey, hi. How are you? My name is Felt, and welcome to the dark side of Magic the Gathering. Oh, okay, not literally. Uh, but what I'm doing is I am playing Mono Red, much to my own chagrin. Uh, this is a going to be some maybe semi regular videos, but I've already done some videos like this where I play meta decks. I played Esper and Grixes because those were much much more my speed at the time, and continue to still be my speed. But I'm also going to try, emphasis on try, I don't promise good gameplay, red's not really my color in this game for the most part, but I'm going to try and play some of the other uh, meta decks, such as Mono Red, which you see here. I'm also probably going to try and do a video on Mono Black, and potentially like Celis Naya enchantments, but these are decks that I'm not grand at piloting. It's mostly a, like, showing off the meta a bit, because this meta is going to stay for a good chunk of time, so I'm going to do a couple of these right before... Uh, the new expansion set? Orexia all will be one. I'm going to be doing these videos and trying to release them before that, so that if you watch my channel, you have a decent idea of what some of the standardized meta decks are in the meta, so that you can play them, have fun with them, maybe try them in the new meta that will probably evolve with the release of new cards and Orexia all will be one. But let's talk about the deck. Uh, Mono Red, it is very low to the ground, very fast, very explosive. Typically only runs 20 lands. Uh, sometimes it's not all just mountains. Sometimes there are Mishra's Foundries, but that's personal preference. And it is more or less all around the idea of playing a bunch of stuff like Monastery Swift Spear, Phoenix Chick, uh, Feldon Rombizid, this guy, and then Commander faces Kakazan. And then just swinging hard, swinging fast, swinging early, getting some impulsive draw with stuff like Reckless Impulse, exiling cards to draw, using stuff like Reinforced Ronin to be just generally evasive threats, making your opponent have to respond at instant speed to them. And sometimes a flyer or two in Shiv and Devastator. Some of the higher end cards, a lot of which we only have one of because Mono Red likes to stay low to the ground and play a lot of their burn spells like Play with Fire and Lightning Strike, and in the festivities. Uh, some of the later game stuff that you will probably end up playing at some point involves Squee, Dubious Monarch. He's a great card. He is a recursive threat if he doesn't get exiled. And he can keep swinging, making a bunch of little devil tokens. Chandra Dash Dress to Kill is Mana Ramp and a Planeswalker, as well as Impulsive Draw on a Planeswalker, both of which can be very nice in this deck. And then Jaya, which either makes you prowess tokens or gives you Impulsive Draw or potentially protects herself and you with her minus two ability. The minus eight is something you're probably not going to get to all that often, but it's still there. It's pretty powerful. But this card, is, this this card is pretty good. This deck is pretty good. Um, the big shining point is mechanized warfare. I only run two copies because I feel like the deck really just wants to play a lot of this stuff over here, a lot of these one drops. And mechanized warfare, you don't need too many copies to really combo off. But what it does is, if a red or artifact source you control will deal damage. Or to an opponent or a permanent they control, it deals that much damage plus one instead, giving essentially all of your red sources plus one. Uh, the reason we only have two is because despite the fact that it is very, very powerful and it does stack with itself, um, you just, like, three mana, you're already playing a bunch of other spells on your three mana point in the curve. You're potentially playing Squee or Chandra, or you're just doubling down playing more Swift Spirits, more Kamanos, more in the festivities, and getting these prowess procs to go crazy. Either way, this is just a version of the deck. There are tons of versions of the deck out there, running tons of different cards. There are some that include things such as... If my game will stop... Cr there we go. Thundering Raiju, which is a great 4-drop that adds plus 1, plus 1 counters to your creatures, and then just pings your opponent depending on how many creatures you have with plus 1, plus 1 counters, auras, or equipment. It's a pretty powerful card, but it is a 4-drop, making it sometimes hard to play around in Mono Red. Sometimes it's a great finisher to your game, though. Either way, hope you like the gameplay, hope I <laughs> hope I figure out how to play this by the end of the gameplay, and like, comment, and subscribe, and all that stuff, and I hope to catch you in the next one. Alright, what do we have here? We go first. We have two lands, two one-drops, solid two-drop in Felden, and a Reckless Impulse. We keep. Usually I don't like to keep if I don't have the one-drop creature. But in this one, I feel like this is, was a powerful enough hand that I wanted to keep it. Reckless Impulse on two can be pretty freaking strong. Feldon causes a lot of problems for a lot of decks, and Lightning Strike can be pretty good at dealing with a lot of threats on board. My opponent might be playing Soldiers? Soldiers. So, 
here's going to be some fun stuff you can do when playing this deck. You can swing in with your creature. You can sit here waiting while your opponent doesn't realize that they're holding priority because they have an invulnerability trigger. They're going to block. Watch this. Watch this. Wait for it. I thought technically it's a... It's a... What's the name of it? Indestructible, sorry. I don't know why I said invulnerability. But they're going to discard a card to make it invulnerable. Right? While that trigger is on the stack, we're going to play with fire it. Making them have to discard another card. And then if they do it again, we're going to lightning strike it, making them discard another card. This is something you can do to the Mono White Soldiers deck. It just really cause a bunch of problems with them and really make them dump their hand. You dump your hand too, but indestructible things are a real threat for Mono Red. So being able to just force them to dump three cards out of nowhere. Like, let's look what they had to dump. They had to dump making a bunch of soldier tokens, a brutal Cathar, and their platoon dispenser. Uh, this is also really nice. I get to choose one, and I can play it until my next turn. Yeah, we basically just make them dump a bunch of stuff there. It's really, really powerful. It's just an incredibly powerful effect. To be able to just, like, force your opponent to just dump their whole hand out of nowhere. Unfortunately, a lot of people who play Guardian of New Banalia don't realize that they're the one holding a priority, like, 99.999.999% of the time. So you get stuck in situations like this where you are just flat out waiting for your opponent. Okay, no reason to swing, though. They just jump block with Sky Strike Officer. We have to play these on our next turn. Hopefully it's enough. The reason that's so powerful into soldiers, by the way, and why I still bothered to do it, is because of, um... Uh, if I draw another red source, I play Mechanized Warfare and end the festivities, by the way. That way I get back my... Swift Spear. And I force them to discard if they want to keep New Banalia alive. I did not. That is rough. So instead, I just kill the Brutal Guitar with Kumano. I'm not Kumano, sorry, I Lightning Strike. I'm not quite sure why they did that, other than they're like, aha, I get more damage in. Because they could see that I was just sitting on a Lightning Strike. This time there's no reason not to swing, because we do kill if they try and trade. I'm really hoping I draw a land here. That'd be really nice. I don't know why they just unearthed that. Maybe they're just like trying really hard to get that lethal going. It's my assumption. This will make them discard something if they want to save New Banalia, which is nice. And it will wipe their tokens. It does unfortunately leave us open to lethal on the way back. I guess they just didn't think about the fact that that would kill. Or maybe they're just like, aha, we have something really good in the back pocket here. So... I think we have lethal here. But I think we get pretty close. We'll make it a 3 3 Shivan Devastator. Uh. Alright, well, that's game now. That's my fault, I guess, for not playing around soldiers having a counter spell. Soldiers don't run counter spells in like 89.999% of the decks, so that's my bad, I guess. I'm just, I mean, hey, it worked out for him, but.
That's not really a very strong card for soldiers. I guess they just just for moments like that, huh? All right, GG's. All right, we are on the play. We have Monastery Swift Piercing, Strike on the Festivity. It's keepable. Strong, no. Keepable, yes. Drawing a third land makes this really nice. Okay, they're probably the mono blue tempo deck. We might be able to bum rush them down in time. We'll find out. They're either mono blue tempo or something. Let's try and play it. They'll probably counter it, but we just get to keep on swinging. Yep, mono blue tempo. All right, it's just two damage a turn. That's all we need. Mono blue tempo is very. That's an aggressive choice. I don't know why they did that. But hey, you do you, boo. Don't need that. Alright. If they don't have a blocker this turn, we win. If we find a burn spell, we win. Blue is really bad about gaining life. Uh, yep, that's game. Welcome to Mono Red. And that's what Mono Red does. Minute 45 game-ish. Glancing at my recording timer. That's pretty standard for Mono Red. And that's why Mono Red is like nigh impossible to deal with. It also looks like our person that we were playing wasn't playing Tempo. They actually played Sphinx of the Clear Skies. That's a mite too slow for Mono Blue Tempo, I guess. I don't know, but yeah, that's what Mono Red can do. All right, opponent goes first, wearing some next Gix, Gix, Gix sleeves. I'm stuttering over my own words here. Oh, this is fine though. Kamano, Phoenix check. And to play with fire. And the festivities is good. We also started with three mana, and since most of our deck is pretty freaking cheap, we'll probably be okay. Um, yeah, let's burn down Giada. They might be playing Mardu Angels, which means we really need to watch out for Giada. Wedding announcement isn't a big deal. Um, I think we just go on the beatdown plan here and just swing with Ronin and Etchings. I think we just kind of keep swinging and swinging and swinging and swinging until something better happens. Firing Overseer, that means we play in the festivities on our turn here, probably. Ah, well, we play Swift Spear because it gets buffed. In the festivities. We're playing really fast, by the way, but that's just because... Mono Red is pretty fast. And yeah. That's what Mono Red can do. You can get wins that fast if your opponent doesn't interact with you quick enough. Stuff like this is why Mono Red is meta. <laughs> like, what is that? Turn 4 win, I want to say? Mono Red can just blow up other decks. Opponent goes first, but we have three mountains, which is great. We have Kumano, we have Monastery Swiss Beer, and we have Felden. And I think all of these are incredible. I think this is an amazing turn one. Right, we might be playing Jund? Or Yund, if you're a viewer of the Twitch stream. Go watch on Twitch. We do lots of funny things, like say names wrong. And we are hitting all of our lands, which is good and bad. I... Wow. Um, do we play the Devastator? I think we do. I think we play the Devastator at X equals 1. We might play at X equals 2, though. We might just not play it at all. We have so many lands in hand, it's not bad to just get those lands out of the way. 
Clearly have some form of interaction though, so I kind of want to just Swift Spear and then play Shivan for one. And just kind of go with like the tiny little guys, just big O and wide moment. Yeah, I was going to say, because I feel like they're holding up some form of removal. I think next turn's gonna be Monter Monastery Swift Spear, Reckless Impulse turn. They might have a Brother's End here. Brotherhood's End? Is that the title of the card? I think so. We'll first play the Swift Spear. Then play the Impulse. Where are we good? If we don't hit anything good, we might just play Mountain Reinforced Ronin. Squeeze good. This guarantees the death of the guy. The, uh, the Goblin Shaman. And, yeah, there's there's the concession. Welcome to Mono Red. We go fast, and we murk them. Okay, opponent goes first. We have double Swift Spear, double play with fire. I think this is actually an amazing hand. It's turn one Swift Spear. Okay, it looks like we might be playing into... It's either Esper or Bant or something like that. Play the Swift Spear. They play counter magic, that's fine. Let's go ahead and get the cast off on the play with fire. Get the double prowess trigger. I don't think another mountain is bad. I wonder if they're playing the combo deck. Uh, that says that they are. The combo deck that I'm talking about is a deck that combos off really hard by, uh, just discarding a bunch of cards. Okay. It combos really hard by discarding a bunch of cards and then playing really expensive spells from the graveyard via things like Repair and Recharge or Invoke Justice. I'm going to assume that they didn't have... Uh, depopulate or something in hand, so a mechanized warfare and then like some more burn spells would have them dead in a couple of turns. Minor Red goes fast. Decks like this can hardly keep up. Our opponent goes first. Phoenix Chicken. The... This is like good because I have three lands, bad because I don't have like any of my prowess combo off. But we'll see. A lot of the games for this video have been like painfully short. Okay, black. Potentially a cut down here. No cut down, that's good. Could be a go for the throat though. I think we just kind of hold up what we got to work with at the moment. And just slow. Oh, it's Rakdos. Okay. Rakdos vampires, most likely. Let's go ahead and Reckless Impulse here. And the reason I'm not just, like, tapping out is if they play that again, I want to be able to kill it again. It doesn't bother me. Mechanized Warfare kills it next turn. Uh, okay, well, Mechanized Warfare doesn't kill it. Play with Fire kills it. I think on this upcoming turn, we Reckless Impulse to hunt for stronger cards and then just start going off they're making the right plays i think try and get the onboard threats Ooh, that's really good here third timer just got a little shorter i wish i think i mentioned this in, in this part or maybe i mentioned it in another part but this deck just goes off really fast and combos off really hard can be really hard to keep up. I think we just kill now? We're very close to just killing. Unfortunately, we were hitting lots of lands, but now we hit a play with fire, we just kill. Never mind. They're getting very lucky. Not like, you know, ah, crazy, I can't win lucky, but just like, hitting two hungry for wars in their deck is... Not rare, but not super common. But they only have like a couple more turns as is. I need to hit more life gains somehow. 
Flesh Gorgers are a good source of that. Good card. Ah, we might lose this one at this rate. We flooded really hard. Uh, I think we just straight up lose here if they have any more damage. Which they do. Yeah, that's GG. Yeah, no, they just win now. Okay, I was going to say, please tell me they're smart enough to take a card. They are. They are. I'm really confused by their deck. It's, it's not like Rakdos Vampires. I think they're. I think this is a deck that screams, I'm tired of dying to mono red aggro. So I'm putting like five sources of life gain and a bunch of removal in it. <laughs> GG, I guess. They just top decked well and I drew eight lands out of 19 cards. That's really bad. I drew eight lands. There's only there's only twenty lands in this deck. I almost drew half my lands. And that was with a reckless impulse, wasn't it? Wasn't that with a reckless that was with two reckless impulses. Wow. That's unlucky. But yeah, this deck can lose pretty quickly to other decks too, because it's it's a do or die. Go big or go home. We are on the play. Double swift spear, double festivities, double lands. This is beautiful. Turn one mountain, turn one swift spear, turn two swift spear, and then Depends on what we draw. Depends on what we draw. Depends on what they play, too. Um, I think this is a reinforced Roman turn. And just kind of get the swinging going. Because if they play something that's like two toughness, like, say, Gallag Readers? They probably just want to, like, double in the festivities. They said good game. I don't know if that's a, like, I'm done, or, like, you're done, or, like... I don't know, man. I never know what people are doing when they, like, emote and talk in this game. I feel like some people only say good game before games, and some people only say it after games. We're just going for big damage. Uh, Mountain's great He Okay, I guess they just were gonna concede, then. All right, so we'll talk through my game plan because I like these videos to show off like how the deck plays a little bit and how I pilot them. You might want to pilot them differently. It was going to be a play with fire to the face to pump my Monastery Swift Spears. I was going to scry the land to the top because that meant next turn I could play Mechanized Warfare, which would just make it easier to finish the, the game. Also going to end the festivities this turn, making it so that I would have dealt three damage with my spells, then another six damage with my Swift Spears, getting them pretty low. And then the Mechanized Warfare turn probably would have popped off pretty hard too, dealing another 4 damage. That might have been lethal. I don't know how to math very well, so apologies if that's not lethal. It would have been very close though. Leading to maybe another in the festivities just finishing it off. I'm going to assume that they were either a combo deck or just like a slow tokens deck, and Mono Red is just way too fast. They are on the play with Kamano, Phoenix Chick, Reinforced Ronin, and Shivan Devastator. I love this hand. Love this hand. Mono into Phoenix Check is pretty good because Phoenix Check has solid evasion and it's something that just wants to swing anyways. It can get removed pretty frequently by like Mono Black and by like Esper. Or just get like chump blocked by Esper pretty effectively. They mold the six. That bodes poorly or well for me. People don't like mulliganing on Arena, myself included. Tapped land. That bodes really well for me. Means I can... Next turn I'll do four... Minimum four. More lands is good. That means we can maybe use Sheev and Devastator as a finisher. This will be eight damage if they don't do anything about it. Which they sometimes will. Might have a burn spell. Might have a counter spell. Still six damage, which is a lot. Yeah, counter spell. Still six damage, which is a lot. Mono red hits really hard, really fast. You either need life gain or really quick removal to take care of it. They have a Brotherhood's End here. There's a chance. Looks like they missed a land though, which is really bad. I think this is a play reinforced Ronin double swing, and then I think we cycle it. 
Unless they play out to kill our Kamano. No, we keep it, we keep it. Oh, they just conceded. These games go really fast when you play Mono Red. I don't know if you've noticed that yet. Uh, we've been going up and down a fair bit because I'm still learning how to pilot the deck, so apologies, you're not just watching me climb. But uh, the games are fast one way or the other. Either you win quick or you lose quick. So yeah, this is a little bit of a quicker video, as I'm sure you noticed, but uh, Mono Red goes hard and goes fast. You see why it's... I, th I think for current metagame, it is nearly 15% of the current like meta decks, as far as like online stats go from like untapped or aether hub or something like that or like mono reds just it's so fast it is so very hard to keep up with mono red especially when they get to be on the play and you like play a tapped land on turn one because that's all you had and then your opponent on turn two takes off like seven hp and you're like ooh, i'm dead mono red's fast it's Honestly, it's still not a very uh, enjoyable deck for me to pilot. I still think it's just kind of okay. Uh, I like the synergies between like the prowess cards, but I much prefer the prowess of like the Izzet prowess decks, where you like go wide with Balmor. I think that's a lot more fun personally. But I'm also a control player at heart, so decks like this aren't necessarily for me. I hope I piloted it well enough for you, dear viewer. Piloted it well enough to get like six wins or something like that. Uh, sorry the video's so short, but a lot of the games were just over that fast. I play quickly myself, and Mono Red is a fast deck, so fast deck plus fast player means you are zooming through cues. If you liked the video, make sure to like, uh, comment, and yell about how I'm the devil for playing Mono Red or something. Either way, thanks for hanging out and watching, and I hope to catch you in the next one.